These are the equipments that you normally find in a typical DC room. The first thing we want to see are some large double doors, as we are bringing in and out of the room large heavy batteries, and we want easy and full access. The DC termination panel. This is where we terminate the battery cables. It provides a point of isolation that can be locked off when the battery is being maintained. It also sometimes houses the battery ground fault indicator. The DC racks that contain all of the batteries. There are several possible configurations for the batteries and we can either run them along the wall which gives us great access and plenty of room for expansion or we can run them sequentially down the length of the room. The arrangement will depend on how much space you need to allow for future expansion. Whichever arrangement you choose, you need to make sure that we have free and easy access to every single battery cell. As during the full life cycle of the battery, individual battery cells will go faulty and need to be replaced. For health and safety reasons, many utilities use a cell lifting jig. If we are planning to use one of these, sufficient space needs to be allowed in between each of the battery tiers. If you are using lead acid batteries, we need to provide an eye wash, so that if any acid gets into someone's eyes, we can quickly and safely wash it out. There are two main types of eye wash. If it's quite a large battery room, it's better to provide a mains connected eye wash, as the quantity and speed of water provided will ensure that all the acid has been cleansed from the eye. If it's quite a small room, then a portable eye wash will be sufficient. When we've installed the battery cells, we need to connect them together. Each cell is connected to its neighbour using a solid metallic link between the positive and negative terminals. We then connect each battery bank to the next. We do this with red cable for the positive connections and black cable for the negative connections. These connections need to be sized to carry the full DC operating current and fault current of the battery. All battery connections are bolted and we use a crimp rated for the full current. We then run the final cables over to the battery connection panel. The battery room is normally located next to the main control room as we need to get the battery cables over to the battery charger cubicles and it makes sense to locate these devices right next to the battery room which will limit the length of these large diameter DC cables and minimize any volt drop. The battery room is considered a hazardous area so we don't allow direct access from the main substation building into the battery room. As we've said previously the battery cells are heavy and awkward to handle so we provide a ramp outside the double doors and also provide a suitable loading area so we can offload the batteries from the truck and take them straight into the battery room.